Hi everyone, my name is Paul DeSinqui and I'm a faculty member at the University of Western Australia's Conservatorium of Music. This video is the first of two about transposing instruments and will help you understand how to transpose for all of the instruments in the ATAR syllabus. Some of you will understand this because you play a transposing instrument, but others may not. Let me show you a brief example. Here is a middle C on the piano. Now, listen to middle C on the B-flat trumpet. Listen to them together. Notice that these two pitches are not the same. That's because the trumpet is a transposing instrument. That means that the pitch written on the page is not the same as the pitch that sounds. So, let's start with understanding which way we go when writing the pitch for transposing instruments. I suggest you remember a face when transposing. Your eyes are higher than your ears. And apart from the piccolo and the E-flat clarinet, which I'll cover in the next video, the written pitch is higher than the sounding pitch. So remember, written higher than sounding, eyes higher than ears, or sounding lower than written, I, uh, ears lower than eyes. That's pretty easy, but the next question is how much higher is each instrument written than it sounds? Well, the clue is in the name of the instrument. Let's start off with the B-flat instruments. So these include the B-flat clarinet, the B-flat trumpet, and the B-flat soprano saxophone. When I play a C on the B-flat trumpet, or a written C on the B-flat trumpet, it sounds a B-flat on the piano. So the key of the instrument that we're talking about, the B-flat trumpet, that's the sounding pitch of when you play a C on that instrument. Now B-flat is a major second lower than C, so the transposition interval for B-flat instruments is a major second. Does that make sense? Let's do the others. Next is the A instruments. And really the only one you need to know here is the A clarinet. Again, when I play a written C on the A clarinet, it sounds like an A on the piano. A clarinet, written C, sounds like A. So the transposition for A instruments is a minor third. For the F horn and the F cor anglais, when I play a C, it will sound an F. And remember, eyes higher than ears, it will sound an F below. The transposition interval for F instruments, therefore, is a perfect fifth. Perfect fifth going down, not a fourth going up. And finally, for the E-flat alto saxophone, when I play a C, it will sound like an E-flat below on the piano. So their transposition interval is a major sixth. So now, you know your transposition intervals. Let's do a quick quiz. What is the transposition interval for an F horn? That's right, it's a perfect fifth. Let's do one more. What is the transposition interval for the A clarinet? It's a minor third. Now to actually do some transposition. You might be asked to do something like the following. Look at this melody on the screen. It is the part for an F horn. You are asked to notate the sounding pitch. Now remember, your eyes are higher than your ears. So the written pitch that you're seeing is higher than the sounding pitch that you have to write. So we want to transpose this down to the sounding pitch using our transposition interval, which for F horn, if you remember, is a perfect fifth. So the F horn's written melody, G-A-B, will sound C-D-E below it. Your turn. Here is the sounding pitch on the screen for you right now. What would be the written pitch for an E-flat alto saxophone? Remember, will you go up or down? Is the question asking you to go from sounding up to written or from written down to sounding? Also, what will be your transposition interval? 
Pause the video and write down your answer before I go through the process. So, your eyes are higher than your ears. The written pitch is higher than the sounding pitch. So we want to transpose this up to the written pitch using our transposition interval, which for alto saxophone is a major sixth. So the melody G, A, B flat will become E, F, sharp, G. Remember that you will need to transpose your key signature in the same way if there is one in your example. If there is a key signature and an accidental present in the example, you will need to put an accidental in the same spot in your answer. Just be careful though, it won't always be the same type of accidental as it was in the question. A sharp won't necessarily be a sharp, a flat won't necessarily be a flat, they might change. There is still more to do on transposition. In the next video, I will explain the low saxophones and low clarinet and their clef changes, as well as the piccolo, double bass and the contrabassoon and how they work. Thanks for watching this video today. If you are coming to UWA after school, you will be studying two majors in your degree. Did you know that one of them can be music? We have a lot of students studying pre-med, law and engineering who do music as their second major. It gives you a chance to keep having fun playing your instrument and provides a nice balance to the hours of studying for your first major. Of course, you can also do the full music degree and do both majors in music. Email us at music at uwa.edu.au for more information on how the two-major system works at UWA. Good luck for your ATAR music studies this year.